In today's video, I'm going to show you guys me redesigning the website for one of my favorite mountain bike brands. We'll be taking their current website that looks like this and we'll be turning it into this. We'll go through it start to finish and I'll talk about some of my decision making in the design as we go. Let's get right to it. Okay, so first things first, this is the YT Industries website. It's pretty simple. It's got a very simplified header and all the navigation is just kind of hidden away here. I think this is actually one of the biggest problems with the website. When we scroll down here to this section, this is a good thing for being able to sort of see the different types of bikes. But I think if there's something we can do to kind of incorporate this up into the hero, that's going to be good. We scroll down here and then you can see they've just kind of got these big images, but none of it seems to really kind of match. And there's no sort of unison between the design. Parallel suspension guide. I think we can combine this with this section here. And then down here, we've got call to action to go to the mill and then this here. And I think we can combine them into a section as well. Social, newsletter and footer. So the key things I want to simplify with this design are a better navigation. I want to have more consistency between the images and all the different call to actions that are on this homepage. I want to see more product on the actual homepage. We'll choose our frame tool and then I'm going to choose MacBook Pro 14. So first thing we want to do is we want to work on our header. Now we'll grab a frame and we'll drag this 64 pixels tall and we'll grab the logo from the website and just paste that into our header. We'll click onto our frame. Let's actually make a layout guide for this. So we'll go down here, layout, and we'll give this 12 column and for here we'll go 64. This is just going to help keep us organized as we go on with it. So let's do our navigation. Now this is one of the problems that we want to solve. So duplicate that out. Clothing, parts and accessories. And then we'll make that an auto layout using shift and A. And then the gap between them will be 32. Let's move it about there for now. For the font of our navigation, we're going to go with this. Bebas new and 24 pixel size. Let's take this and then we'll drag that down a little bit. And then we'll make a little bar that sits on top. And then we'll have something just like this. Free shipping on all bikes. Use free code. We're going to click onto our frame and we'll turn that into an auto layout. And then let's change the padding to 8. And then we'll position this just so it sits directly underneath it. On the current website right now, you can see they've got search, car and profile. Well, for ours, we're going to simplify that just a little bit more. And we're going to add in these three icons. And then if we head over to Unsplash, if we just search for something like mountains, this image here looks pretty good. So we're going to copy that, click on our main frame and we'll just paste this right in. And then we'll just minimize this down a little bit. Click on our main header and we'll actually make sure that that's got a fill of white. We're going to choose one of these bikes to work with. So I'm going to choose this one because this is the bike that I actually want myself. And we're just going to copy this image and we're going to paste this in. And luckily, the original website has really high res, good PNGs of the bikes. So that's going to help us a lot. But the next thing we've got to figure out is how to make it look like it's not just floating on top of the image. I found this Figma file just on the community page and it's this brush splat. Let's just take this one, for example, and then let's paste this in and then let's pull this up really big and then maybe angle it slightly, position it underneath the bike, but on top of the background image. And doing just that, you can see the bike is now a lot more placed in our hero. So I'll play around with it and I'm actually going to go with this, which is a slightly more simplified version of that brush stroke. So for our main hero message, let's use something like this. Now this is using the same font as we did for our navigation. This is just sized up a lot. This is 108. And then underneath we have this sort of sub message and then that's 24. So it's just these two fonts, Bebas new and then enter. And then we'll use enter for all the sort of small text. We'll take one of these links and we'll duplicate this down and we'll make this a button. So let's just go shop now. And then let's increase the size to let's say 28. And then we'll make this an auto layout. We'll make it white so we can see what we're doing. And then we'll go 24 and 16. And then we'll just get that position somewhere like that. And I don't think YT really has a specific brand color, but for the purpose of this site, we're going to make one and we're going to go with a sort of bright green and we'll get this position just underneath in our hero. So on the original website, we did see this choose your bike section and I wanted to find a way to incorporate that into our hero. So 
I think we're going to do something like this. This here is the logo for the type of bike. And then maybe in this hero, you can click there and then it'll swap out the bike. I think we should add in something like this. This is one of the YT Pro Riders. And final thing that I think is really going to bring this hero to life is let's take the logo and let's duplicate this up here so we can work with it. And we'll drag this out. What I really like about the logo is this sort of lightning bolt thing. And I really want to find a way to use that on the website. So let's try this. If we make a rectangle here and then we click on there, then we can go up here and do subtract and then we'll go flatten and then we'll go edit object and we'll just delete all this stuff because we don't need this. Now we've got a cool lightning bolt. Let's drag this down into our hero and then we'll turn it like this and then let's bring the size of this out and then let's make it green and then let's drag it underneath our bike. I think that's such a good touch for really tying in the brand with the website itself. Click on our frame and we'll drag this down and we'll get to work on the rest of the website. We'll grab our hero text and this text underneath and then we'll drag it down here and then let's make this black. We'll reduce the size of this to something like 64. We'll change the text to something like that. And then we'll change the size of this to 16. Change it to a gray color. And then let's go this season's favorite picks. We'll reduce the spacing underneath to something like 16. And we'll position that somewhere just down here. We'll open our grid and then we'll make a frame. Let's just go for like a three product row. We'll go like that. And then we'll give it a background color of something like this so we can see it. Drag in a bike image. We'll give it a name and price to the card. We'll add this little new indicator so it sits at the top right. And remember up here, so each type of bike has its own specific logo. And I think we could add that in just there, something like that. Up here, we had that lightning bolt, which I think worked really well. So let's also add that to the product card. We'll repeat the same step to add more products. I think in this section here, we can add some arrows. So let's choose the frame tool and then we'll make a frame that's 64 and then we'll go black. And then let's go into this and we'll go like this. We'll do a line and then we'll duplicate that, add the point, turn it like that, flip it like that. And let's go over here to the stroke tools. We'll go into the settings and then we'll change this to brush and we'll change this to this and then we'll bump up the weight and then you can play around with it until you get something like that and then we'll duplicate this turn that round make this white we'll give this a gray stroke and then we'll make the arrow inside this one gray because the website's very clean and white, having these little grunge elements really helps tie it in with the lifestyle of the brand. So, you know, we've got that big paint stroke coming across the hero. I think we can really accent that with little details like having those arrows that are a little more hand drawn. Whilst we're at it, we'll take that arrow and then we'll paste that into our shop now button. For the next section, we want to get these three main call to actions, the apparel, the suspension guide, and then the pros. We want to get that reworked into a new section and I have an idea for it. So let's get a frame and then we'll make this full width, full size. And then we're going to head over to Unsplash and we're going to search for another mountain bike image. And we want something that's fairly minimal, something that doesn't really have too much going on. So I'm going to paste in something like this and we're going to use that as a background image. What I want to do as well, so we're going to take this from up here. This is our sort of paint stroke. And if we select the frame and then we make sure clip content is on, we can kind of mask it like this. And we only want the very edge of it. Uh, and then let's flip this round and then we'll position this at the top of that section. And then we'll take this from the top and then we'll flip that around. And then we can just use that on the bottom as well. And then all of a sudden this section looks part of the page and it ties in with the sort of theme that we have going on up there. We're going to give it a call to action, which is something like this. Now this is showing off the apparel. This is just this sort of card. And I think we'll have three of them that sort of mirrors the grid that we have up there. So suspension guide, pros, and then we'll get this centered just in 
that section that we've just created. Then what I think we can do is we could take this section here, which was the new arrivals of the bikes, and we can duplicate this all the way down to make a new section. And what we could focus on is some apparel on the homepage of the site. And that's something the current website doesn't do at all. So let's change this to something like new threads. And then we can change each of these to a clothing product. Then if we take this section, we can duplicate this underneath. And this section here on the current website is what we're going to rework with this. We're going to change the background image so it's different from that. And then we're going to add in these call to actions here. So this is just this section, but we kind of reworked it. And it kind of follows the same style of what we did there. And because the current website already has really good graphics, it's very simple just to slot these into here. And then last but not least, we'll add in just some social and newsletter, which we've only reworked slightly from the original website. And then we've got a footer with all of our links and we'll just drag that underneath. So I think we set out what we managed to do with this website. We managed to simplify the navigation. I think we made it look a lot more consistent and cohesive and tie in with the YT brand. And we've showed more product on the homepage itself. What do you guys think? Did you like the redesign? Did you follow along? If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to get the Figma file to this, you can head over to the Patreon. It is only available for paid members, but if you want to support the channel and you want to get the file, you can do so. Otherwise, you can just follow along using this video and see how you get on. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll catch you guys soon with another video.